good morning to one and all uh, let us welcome our today's uh, guest mr anand patil who has consented to uh, be a part of this webinar titled evolution of artificial intelligence and machine learning and its application in the retail industry we are thankful to you sir for sparing your time and be with us so i would request uh, dr manish billore sir principal sister kratibar to uh, see his uh, uh, to say his opening remarks uh, thank you uh, professor mitra and uh, a warm welcome to mr anand patel to sistech and uh, hearty good morning to all of the viewers uh, i'm sure uh, this includes faculty members from management as well as from our uh, ai and ml stream also the students of engineering as well as management so uh, at the outset let me first congratulate the organizing team that uh, perhaps uh, in the first time in the history uh, of sistec this kind of rare event has happened so it's a combination of uh, management and artificial intelligence and machine learning so uh, we have both of the courses running at sistec uh mba as well as ai ml uh, which is a btech course undergraduate engineering course so as i mentioned this is a rare combination both of the departments have come together and this is uh, from both of the campuses so we are actually around 25 kilometers apart from each other but still jointly organizing this kind of session sistech actually is known for uh, doing experiments doing uh, innovation in education Uh, and the main purpose of this kind of innovation is to enable better learning of the students also to have a better outcome of what uh, whatever uh, inputs we are uh, making to the uh, educational sector uh, we find uh, new ways of how to uh, make students learn in a better way how to make them uh, comprehend the situation of learning how to make them uh, uh, having a, a use of education in a better way and of course how to have a lifelong learning lifelong understanding of their educational learnings so uh, this is a, an overview just for the information of our special guest for the day uh, mr anand patil uh, he is a stalwart in himself having a strong hold on management practices as well as the application of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, into the management practices uh, daily routine uh, how we can implement how we can adapt these techniques how we can have a practical implementation of all of all these techniques uh, i am known uh, i have been told that uh, he holds an authority on all these subjects all these areas so today definitely we are fortunate to have him on board i'm sure this uh, event or this occasion will not be the single one and subsequently we shall have more occasions to listen to him more occasions to have his guidance and suggestions uh, in how to enhance our educational practices what we are carrying out at sistech with these words i once again welcome mr anand patel to sistech ratibad and gandhinagar campuses and uh, wish everybody uh, success of not only this session but also the subsequent sessions that we shall be having in the time to come thank you very much thank you sir before we uh, hand over the session to uh, mr patil i would like to have a brief introduction of him uh, mr anand patil has spent more than two decades so far in thoughtfully responding to varied business objectives and inspiring multiple teams along the way Mr Patil retains his lifelong passion for steering shopping malls to build excitement and foster social interactions. He continues to cultivate new ways to bring people together, create experiences that make shopping malls an indispensable gathering place for communities they serve and enhance the valuation of the assigned asset for the owners. currently he is shopping center head of nexus whitefield mall bengaluru this asset is a mixed use development with a mall of 0.3 million square feet gla and opud service residences with 143 keys spread across 0.2 million square feet before this assignment he was deputy center head of nexus hyderabad mall this was a 0.9 million square feet retail asset and it clocks a consumption of 1000 plus crore annually 
The aforementioned shopping malls were previously owned by Prestige Group, India's premier real estate agency. In his earlier roles, Mr. Patil headed Acropolis Mall at Kolkata, and he also headed marketing function at Phoenix Market City, Bengaluru. With these words, I would like to invite Mr. Patil to share his valuable thoughts for all the viewers. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, um, Dr. Manish Bilore and Professor Soman Mitra, as well as the other faculty members, Dr. Rahul Srivastava, Dr. Harleen Kaur, uh, and everyone who has um, joined in um, this morning. Now, um, just um, uh, one um, um, point I would like to make. Um, my organization doesn't uh, allow me to stream yard, so I'm using my personal system and for my person, personal system to be enabled. So I've quoted out. So just in case, uh, if um, uh, there is some interruption, uh, I request you to hang in. Um, I would um, resume in a minute or two. Uh, that was the first point. Uh, next is that uh, I have um, uh, packaged this session in such a way that uh, the overall uh, you know, introduction and greetings to the, uh, to the management of SysTech and to the students is some inserted somewhere uh, in, in between. So let me just uh, get going. Uh, I would like to uh, share the screen. Um, just just a confirmation required. Um, the screen is visible, right? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, so let's get get going. Uh, let me. Um, why the, this person is in the opening slide, and what is this question? It let it unfold um, through the session. But let me begin with a quick test, right? So on your screen are eighteen images. Can you please count the number of puppies and muffins on the screen? Uh, you may share your answers in the chat window. So, I'll give another maybe five, 10 seconds. Just count the number of puppies and number of muffins. Fine, so let me move on. So there, there was a reason why I made you go through this uh, puppy and muffin test. Uh, we did, uh, we humans did take some time through Perceive through the 18 images and to arrive at the result, right? So uh, there are actually 11 muffins and uh, seven puppies in, in this image. So if a computer can also revert with the same result, right, then um, it falls under the realm of artificial intelligence. It is as simple as that. Uh, how is a computer able to arrive at that result? It is because an algorithm is written with image samples of puppy from an image library uh, are tagged to this algorithm. Uh, basically, the algorithm is trained with some set of images. Then it is able to distinguish between puppy and muffin. It is this simple. Say you are building a startup uh, that will provide an endless stream of images of puppies to the dog lovers. So you um, use a neural network to build a computer vision system for detecting puppies in pictures. Uh, if the lear learning algorithm's accuracy is not yet good enough, then you will come under tremendous pressure to improve the puppy detector. Um, what do you do then if um, uh, the algorithm is not so um, you know robust? Uh, then your team will suggest you uh, some ideas, get more data, collect more pictures uh, of puppies, uh, get the algorithm to tag more uh, images of puppies, uh, collect a more you know diverse training set uh, of puppies in unique positions, different angles, different camera settings. Uh, or train the algorithm longer uh, by running more, uh, you know, gradient um, iterations, then try a bigger neural network. 
um, or try a smaller neural network. Uh, if you choose any of the above possible directions, uh, you will build a leading puppies picture platform and lead your company to success. If you choose poorly, you might waste months. So, um, but we don't have to be worried thinking that this is beyond our understanding. Uh, we are not here today to write any artificial intelligence algorithm codes. Uh, for those who are already pursuing uh, AI and ML and the faculty members, um, uh, they are uh, obviously technically way ahead. Um, they will also go deep into the technical aspects during the college course uh, to gain mastery or to pass on the mastery uh, over the technical nuances. Some of us here present today are not software engineers. Uh, or we are not artificial uh, intelligence scientists. Uh, we are here to understand the subject, this concept um, from a business point of view, from a normal uh, layman's perspective and how it impacts us and how we can leverage this in businesses. So imagine if I uh, um, must travel uh, by flight uh, tomorrow, uh, say from Bhopal to New Delhi, uh, I don't need to fly aeroplanes uh, for me to fly from, uh, to reach uh, Delhi from Bhopal. Uh, that is the job of pilots to fly the aeroplanes. All uh, I need to do is use my basic faculty, basic knowledge, go to a travel booking uh, website, uh, identify the shortest, uh, the cheapest and non-stop flight available at a time slot uh, suited for my uh, requirement. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's it. So understanding the concept of artificial intelligence is also that simple. For those who are not into AI and ML field, uh, we don't have to worry about too much. Um, we just have to apply our basic faculty. So what I am trying to tell um, you all is that this subject uh, is quite easy to grasp. And you will agree to me by the end of this session. The session will not last more than 45-50 minutes. Uh, I have some interesting videos. I've collated some other interesting uh, content, um, which uh, probably uh, has not been stitched like this before, right? So sometimes when we hear the word artificial intelligence or simply AI, uh, we think that this has got nothing to do with us. Uh, actually, um, AI has already become an integral part of uh, our life. Um, it is um, used by us every single day uh, in many different elements of our life without we realizing it. We use it multiple times during the day. Um, and we, we just don't realize that it is AI which is in the background that has solved the problem uh, for us. Uh, for example, uh, Microsoft Outlook, for those of you who use Outlook, uh, there is a feature called Microsoft Cortana. Now it is called as uh, Microsoft Viva. So one of the first emails that comes on Microsoft Outlook um, is this Microsoft uh, Viva. So um, actually this Viva tells, um, reads all the previous emails and highlights the pending tasks, right? Um, how can Cortana or Viva remember so many things? Uh, well, it, it is the AI-powered digital assistant running on Windows operating system. So this Cortana or Viva is designed to learn a user's habit and anticipate future needs by surfacing relevant data in a personal context. Uh, so this Cortana is always looking out for you, remembering things so that you don't have to and proactively suggesting things you might need to do um, and helping you to do more with less effort. Uh, when you wake up <clears throat> uh, and pick up your iPhone, it opens automatically by recognizing your face. This is basically AI in practice. Uh, the device uses machine vision to scan your face and uses machine learning algorithms to make sure it is your face allowing you to access your phone. It is the same puppy and muffin test the iPhone does. The algorithm does it far more efficiently and far more quickly than we humans do. Next is social media. 
uh, we all consume facebook twitter instagram quite a lot all these platforms use ai in a lot of different ways uh, for start the information that they are giving you is based on your history what you like to see or what you last visited all this is again based on ai these social media platforms use ai for back end security as well can then cancelling fake news is ai in action um, social media also uses a lot of machine learning to identify cyber bullying uh, all this is running in the background without us necessarily knowing that it is ai at work uh, then um, when you send an email in a day we send a lot of emails um, uh, in our colleges or at work uh, so for various purposes when we send an email we use tools such as spell checker or auto correct or synonym function uh, inbuilt synonym function or grammarly to write better and correct english all these tools use natural language processing capabilities uh, to check what you write <clears throat> uh, when you send or receive an email the spam filters um, the spam filters the spam goes to a separate folder uh, or a separate tab uh, the spam filters are also driven by ai the embedded ai uh, try to monitor the traffic happening across different email networks and identify potential spams and they filter it out every time you do a google search again what is happening is google quite precisely serves you only what it knows about you and what you are interested in all driven by ai google cannot search the entire backend in a split second without the backing of ai it understands you as a person and the themes you are interested in and offers relevant results for the websites you want to look at and every search result is personalized to you using artificial intelligence the other tool we are increasingly um, using these days is the voice uh, voice search we use sira sorry siri or um, cortana or alexa or google home again all these tools use natural language processing and natural language generation uh, which is driven by ai so the simple capability of understanding of what we are and what we are saying is done using ai uh, then the returning answer is enabled by ai as well um, this is another great example we have a lot of um, smart home uh, devices these days such as the smart lock smoke alarm system home surveillance system smart heaters all these use ai to understand uh, how you are using your house it will use information uh, it will learn how long it will take for you to heat or cool your house and soon you will have smart everything we know smart fridges uh, that make wine recommendations smart cars etc everything is becoming smarter and all of this is enabled by ai sorry ai you access ai and all of this even before say you go to college when you drive to college um when you drive to college um you um, possibly may use google maps just to check what is the traffic scenario uh, so uh, google maps is a tool that uses ai to monitor live traffic conditions and compares previous traffic conditions uses climate and current weather information to recommend best route for you to drive to work uh, if you have a new modern car it might also have a driver assist function again uh, driven by ai monitoring uh, where you are driving where the other cars are and that you are staying safely in line etc and soon we will have autonomous vehicles in fact we already have this autonomous cars in operation in some other countries uh, another great example of ai in practice is security uh, security during your banking transaction you might walk into a store 
say in a capital mall in bhopal or db mall uh, and buy something using your debit card or credit card all this transaction will be checked uh, in a split second in the back end using ai uh, the back end um, deployed infrastructure will study lots of information where you are what normally purchases you do other historical clues and then ai will decide uh, saying this is a valid transaction or this is should this transaction should be declined there is something fishy in it all these tools are getting better uh, by using ai uh, then you fancy bit of shopping whether you go to online shopping on flipkart or amazon most established e-commerce and amazon's recommendations are driven by ai so they have learned what you like what other people like you seem to like and therefore they will make relevant recommendations amazon is now getting so confident that they are starting to do what they call anticipatory shopping they will start shipping goods towards you because they know you are going to buy them at some point in time soon so uh, and finally when you get back home in the evening after your college um, you settle down on your sofa to watch the movie you put on netflix and what netflix is re recommending to you is ai so uh, netflix again understands your past viewing history and 80% of what we are watching is driven by recommendation engine and, and they go back again and become smarter and smarter hopefully these are some of the amazing examples of how ai is used in everyday life so this makes us ask um, what is artificial intelligence uh, where did it all start so how does it work in simple term what is machine learning then then what is deep learning uh, so much of confusion maybe for the non technical students uh, well the whole objective of this session is to offer some clarity uh, to the non technical students and also share the evolution of ai to the technical students um, and and share some basics of this topic uh, uh, in in a very uh, easily understandable way uh, as i said earlier it is as easy as booking a flight from bhopal to delhi so uh, the mba students need not worry i will attempt to unravel uh, this in a very simple manner uh, by the end of this session um, of about 30 40 minutes from now Uh, i shall offer all the insights that you may want to get out of this uh, session right uh, so right then good morning everyone uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on artificial intelligence i would like to thank uh, each one of you for joining in i would also like to thank um, the um, entire overarching um, sagar group of institutions uh, i thank mr manish bilore um thank you professor soman mitra thank you dr rahul srivastava uh, dr harleen ko uh, and the it team so uh, i start with a video followed by the simplest definition of artificial intelligence um this is the session flow for today uh, so the ai in our everyday life which we just uh, visited what is ai then which i'm commencing now then the turing test you will get to know in the coming uh, uh, few moments uh, machine learning and deep learning collaborative intelligence and then ai in retail so let me start with a video ai is probably the most important thing humanity has has ever worked on Now I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. Now I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. Now I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. So why does Sundar Pichai likens artificial intelligence to electricity or, or fire um 
So uh, he feels that this is more profound than electricity or fire. Um, let me answer. So for more than 250 years, uh, the fundamental drivers uh, of economic growth uh, have been the technological inventions. The most important of these, what the economists call as the general purpose technologies, a category that includes the steam engine, it was a general purpose technology, electricity, invention of electricity, it's a general purpose technology, the internal combustion engine, um, all these are general purpose technologies. Each one catalyzed waves of complementary innovations and opportunities. The internal combustion engine, for example, gave rise to cars, trucks, aeroplanes, um, excavators. Um, and because of this, there came big, big box retailers, suburban centers, warehouses, new supply chains, uh, all of that. So the most important general purpose technology of our era is artificial intelligence. It is a general purpose technology, not some sci-fi. Artificial intelligence is a set of algorithms or models that are trained with massive amount of data. And the accumulation and combination of these algorithms creates an artificial intelligence application in real time. And those recommendations could be anywhere from automation to making recommendations to human beings to do a specific action. So I would like to repeat, artificial intelligence really is a set of algorithms or models that are trained with massive amount of data. And the accumulation and combination of these algorithms creates an artificial application in real time. So here are some more definitions of artificial intelligence. So it is the study of how to build or, or program computers to enable them to do what human minds can do. So few other examples are there. Uh, I think this is the last one is probably um, quite easy to grasp. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a machine to display human-like capabilities such as reasoning, learning, planning, and creativity. And what are the types of AI? Uh, you'll see at the bottom, um, there is software artificial intelligence, which are these virtual assistants, image analysis software, search engines, speech recognition system, face recognition system, etc. And then there is embodied AI, robots, autonomous cars, drones, Internet of Things, etc. Now I have one more video by Sundar Pichai who demonstrates the Google Assistant, which is nothing but an artificial intelligence application. Um, it is uh, uh, Sundar Pichai just demonstrates the features of Google Assistant. Uh, I have a couple of videos of Sundar Pichai. I just love this person uh, he, for his simplicity, for his equanimity, and for whatever he's doing to make this world a better place. Just tune in. The progress of the assistant. As I said earlier, our vision for our assistant is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, we are working hard to help users through those moments. We want to connect users to businesses in a good way. Businesses actually rely a lot on this, but even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. So let's listen. Oh, how can I help you? 
Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. So I can need one second. Mm-hmm. So at what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 115. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. was a real call you just heard. The amazing thing is the assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. Hey, how may I you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Today, um, tonight? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we reserve for like after like five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. It's just you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Again, that was a real call. We have many of these examples where the calls quite don't go as expected, but the assistant understands the context, the nuance. It knew to ask for wait times in this case and handle the interaction gracefully. Okay. Yeah, so that was Sundar Pichai and um, how did it all start? Um, we saw a pen pencil sketch of a person in the beginning, right? It's now time to reveal him. Um, it all started with Alan Turing, uh, who can justifiably call as the founder of modern computer science. Um, there is also uh, a movie uh, on his life called The Imitation Game which I think was released in 2014. And um, uh, the role of uh, Alan Turing is uh, played by Benedict uh, Cumberbatch. Uh, in case um, if you haven't seen this movie, I urge you all to please do watch this movie uh, as to what led to the invention of a uh, computer. Um, so it all started with uh, Alan Turing during um, the Second World War. Uh, in the early 1940s, Alan Turing worked for Government Code and Cipher School at GC and CS at Bletchley Park, uh, Britain's code-breaking center that produced ultra-intelligence. Uh, he's devised a number of techniques using electromechanical machine and played a pivotal role in cracking intercepted coded messages. Um, called the Enigma that enabled the Allies to defeat the Nazis in many crucial uh, engagements and encounters, including the Battle of Atlantic, and uh, in so he helped uh, the Allies win the war. So after the World War II, writing uh, in the journal called The Mind in 1950, Alan Turing devised a key concept in the philosophy of artificial intelligence 
called the imitation game and later uh, came to be known as the Turing test, which persists uh, to this day. He hypothesized that a computer could be so powerful way back in 1950, he said the computer could be so powerful that it could fool a human into thinking that they are interacting with another human and therefore that the computer could be regarded as being intelligent. The fact that this paper was published in the Journal of Psychology and Philosophy shows how groundbreaking this paper was. Um, barely a year after, uh, this too came barely a year after the first programmable computers um, uh, you know, were built. Here I was Turing who was likening computers not to machines but to humans. To this day, AI and its application is a big subject in philosophy as much as it is in the computer science. A blending of seemingly unrelated disciplines that finds its roots almost 75 years earlier to Turing's paper. So what he did in Turing test is simple. It was a method of inquiry in artificial intelligence uh, for determining whether or not a computer is capable of thinking like a human being. So Turing proposed that a computer can be said to possess artificial intelligence uh, if it can mimic human responses under some specific conditions. The original Turing test requires um, three terminals, uh, each of which is physically separated from the other two. One terminal, however, is operated by the computer, while the other two are operated by the humans. During the test, one of the human functions acts as a questioner, while the second human and the computer uh, acts as act as respondents. The questioner interrogates the respondents with, within a specific subject area using specified format and context. After a preset length of time uh, and number of questions, if the questioner is then asked to decide which of these two uh, was human and which was computer, if the questioner or the interrogator is unable to distinguish to whom he was interacting with, then the computer is considered to have artificial intelligence because the questioner regards it as just as human as the human respondent. So uh, just a, a small video on um, Alan Turing. The idea of artificial intelligence can be traced back to the work of Alan Turing carried out in the Second World War. Alan Turing is widely regarded as having a highly significant role in pioneering the development of computer science and artificial intelligence. During the Second World War, Turing and colleagues created an automated machine for breaking secret codes known as the bomb. This machine could find the solution to code breaking problems in minutes tasks that would have taken humans weeks to complete. The bomb could effectively do something that no human could. The bomb was a moment when it became possible to speculate on the limits of what machines could do. Turing's work on the bomb influenced his thinking on the possibilities that computing may have for the future. In 1947, during a public lecture, Turing gave what is thought to be the first mention of computer intelligence, saying, what we want is a machine that can learn from experience. In 1950, Turing wrote a paper entitled Computer Machinery and Intelligence, where he began posing the question, can machines think? It is from this paper that the Turing test derives. Turing begins by speculating with the question, can machines think? But in the end goes on to say that's a very difficult question to answer because it's very tricky to define thinking or even how to measure thinking. So instead of attempting to answer that question, can machines think? He chose to replace the question with something he called the imitation game, where it was asked if a machine could convincingly imitate a human. 
This game eventually evolved into what we now think of as the Turing test. Yeah, so the term artificial intelligence was coined by John McCarthy, a math professor at Dartmouth College. Dartmouth is one of the seven Ivy League colleges in US. So <clears throat> McCarthy presented his definition of artificial intelligence at a conference on the campus of his Dartmouth College in 1956, uh, indicating the beginning of AI research. Since then, uh, some AI technologies have been around uh, for more than 50 years, but major AI breakthroughs such as the Siri, Alexa, or, and AI in medicine, etc., have all taken place in recent years. The reason is earlier we had small amount of data and it was not enough to predict the accurate result. But now there is tremendous increase in the amount of data along with such enormous amount of data. Now we have more advanced algorithm and high end computing power and storage as well um, that can deal with large amount of data. Now that we have some understanding of AI, let's also clear the air about MI and uh, ML and um, DL. So AI is the umbrella discipline that covers everything related to making machines uh, smarter. Machine learning uh, is commonly used uh, along with AI, but it is a subset of AI. Uh, machine learning refers to an artificial intelligence system that can self-learn based on an algorithm. Systems that get smarter uh, and smarter over time without human intervention uh, is machine learning. The beauty is that this machine's ability to keep improving its performance without humans having to explain exactly how to accomplish all the tasks it is given. The machine learning systems can automatically learn and improve without explicitly being programmed. The recommendation systems on music and video streaming services are some of the examples of uh, machine learning. So deep learning is a machine learning uh, technique applied uh, to large data sets. Deep learning processes information uh, in the same manner as human brains do. Uh, it is used in technologies such as driverless cars. So uh, or just uh, a short video on uh, machine learning. I request you all to go through this. machine learning API, you know, uh, AI was talked about even 25 years ago when I was at IIT and when you were at IIT. Mm. What has changed in the last two or three years? Uh, why has AI become suddenly, and machine learning suddenly become the new buzzword? I mean, uh, I think the biggest advances you're seeing uh, is, is largely due to, uh, you know, two things. The techniques which we use in deep learning, uh, deep neural networks, uh, have been around for many years, but early on, you know, they weren't that effective because you just didn't have the computational power to run, to run these algorithms. Uh, you know, just for, for the past many years, uh, the computational power has dramatically increased. So when you run uh, deep learning on the latest computation and with access to better data, you get dramatic breakthroughs. So for example, we recently launched uh, Google Translate mm -hmm. and you know, this is machine translation and, and, and using our deep learning systems, the translation quality improvements just in the last year it's bigger than what we've seen in the past 10 years cumulatively. Wow. Wow. So it tells us that you know the ability for computers to do these kinds of tasks, be it image recognition, speech recognition, voice recognition, it's really hitting a tipping point. So I think you know we are definitely in a point of inflection. Advances in machine learning, I think, will make a big difference in many, many fields. Uh, you know, we recently published a paper on you know using machine learning uh, to help diagnose. Uh, diabetic retinopathy it's a condition which causes blindness but if you can detect it earlier you can completely cure it otherwise it causes blindness it's the fastest growing cause of blindness in the world you know, today you need advanced ophthalmologists to detect these conditions 
but using machine learning, we can detect it pretty accurately so that a, a, a regular doctor can detect these conditions. I'm saying this is an early example of the kind of changes that will happen when you apply machine learning to all kinds of fields. Now, Google alone won't do this, but you know, to me, I'm, the thing I'm most excited about is bringing advances from machine learning and AI to as many people in as many fields as possible. Thanks for checking out this video. Sign up with a CAD Guild to kickstart your career. And don't forget. Yeah, so someone thought uh, instead of telling uh, the computer all the rules, why don't we give the computer lots of data so that the computer can make up the rules by itself where the machine learns from the data. And this is a bit like how we learn by ourselves. Um, the, uh, this basically copies the process that we as humans use to learn and be intelligent. So, so we have a brain uh, and it has trillions of neurons and these neurons are all connected. And when we learn something, uh, like for example, we learn to grab something or to speak a language um, uh, when you are a child, um, it takes uh, quite a long time uh, to do this and we go through lots of trial and error so that by experience uh, of um, how do I grab this toy for example and as a baby a lot of things don't quite really work and suddenly when you do achieve, do, when you do learn the neurons make the connections so you are sending um, these signals to these muscles that it really worked. In the same way, uh, when you pick up a language, your parents and teachers will correct you over a period of time. Uh, uh, and then eventually you will master that language. So uh, you learn by experience. The challenge is that learning a language or grabbing a toy uh, or cycling are things we can't actually explain. These are all tacit knowledge. Um, we have explicit knowledge that can be explained. So we have tacit knowledge that cannot be explained. Uh, one cannot do this um, with, uh, you cannot really tell how to, how do you really swim or how do you really cycle. We have to learn through experience. And this is what exactly machines are now able to do. Someone had posted this question um, uh, in the chat window as to what is machine learning, this is exactly what it is. It um, We have to give them a lot of data and they learn from this data. For example, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, an algorithm is given a lot of examples of correct answer to a problem. The process is uh, almost always involves mapping from a set of input uh, X to a set of outputs Y. Uh, for instance, the inputs might be pictures of various animals and the correct outputs might be the labels for those animals. Uh, so eventually the system self learns over a period of time. So deep learning again is a, like I said, it's a specialized machine learning applied to large data sets. So now uh, coming to the last two sections, um, one is the value of collaboration, the collaborative intelligence. Uh, the best way to collaborate um, is to augment human skills uh, by offloading routine work to artificial intelligence and give employees new analytical tools um, to improve customer experience, uh, to discover new possibilities for products, services, and business models that drive growth. So humans should assist uh, machines. Humans should assist artificial intelligence systems in training, in explaining, and in sustaining, and at the same time, machines should assist humans in amplifying our capabilities, in interacting with us, in embodying us. So that's the value of um, collaboration, uh, whether um, it is, or rather, whether it is driving sales uh, with recommendation and uh, pers personalization or driving efficiency uh, with robots or sensors um, or offering new ways to shop and <clears throat> manage stores. Artificial intelligence is touching every part of the retail industry. Uh, just have a look at this. I am a helper. 
empowering new <coughs> discoveries everywhere we go. And helping us reimagine our perfect home. I am delivering on every promise. Predicting what comes next. And stepping up to meet the demand. Ensuring care in everything we deliver. And the safety of those who make it happen. I am anticipating every need. Responding to every challenge. Saving valuable time. And simplifying our busy lives. to life by NVIDIA and inspired minds everywhere. Yeah, so personalized recommendation engines have been a mainstay of uh, shopping malls for the years. Then robots both in-store and in warehouse are becoming increasingly common. <clears throat> then uh, <clears throat> machine vision is being brought uh, in to scan shelves and manage inventory, suggest fashion ideas. All this is already happening in the retail industry. Um, and in case of Amazon um, Go and other competitors, uh, they remove the need for cashiers and uh, traditional checkouts. Uh, then Starbucks is rolling out smart coffee machines that are using predictive maintenance as part of the, their wider deep brew AI initiative that their CEO uh, Kevin Johnson has called as uh, the key differentiator for the future. Um, Uniqlo developed uh, an automated personal shopper uh, that gauges customers' reaction to different outfits in order to recommend different items to suit their moods and preferences. Kroger, which is a grocer retailer in US, uh, has uh, sensors to constantly track the temperatures inside cold and frozen food cases, uh, sending store associates a digital notification if there is a mechanical breakdown or a door has been left ajar. So um, for uh, the <clears throat> artificial intelligence, retail is the third largest uh, end market uh, you know, for, for AI application. Uh, Going forward in the coming years, uh, AI will seamlessly merge online and offline experience. Um, technology will sync backend operations uh, such as the staff, supply chain, stock movements, um, all the way through to UX, user experience, tracking purchases, giving personalized recommendations. Um, AI, AR experiences, digital menus and digital tablets will be a norm in food and beverages. Functional robots will assume mechanical tasks that will allow staff to focus more on quality of the food. <clears throat> Fashion stores will energize the services around it. Uh, they will draw uh, the consumer into the brand story to deliver a remarkable immersive and brand product experience. So after this, I have a last video on uh, the uh, AI application in retail industry, and uh, that would be the end of this session. new digital technology is emerging. Artificial intelligence or AI. AI learns from data and enables complex processes to be automated independent of human intervention. 
making them faster, less prone to errors and more efficient. In the business world, AI is radically transforming many industries. With the ability to identify patterns and detect anomalies in mountains of digital information, it's adding new insights and possibilities. And, once trained, is tireless in processing many standard tasks. In retail, Fujitsu's AI Center of Excellence has developed a new solution for a major European hypermarket chain to cut fraud and improve the customer experience by ensuring self-service checkouts remain financially viable. The innovation works by using AI to cross-check scanned items, helping detect and prevent fraudulent barcode use by consumers. A study by the UK's University of Leicester found retailers in Europe and the US experience a shoplifting rate from self-scanners nearly double the industry average. With a turnover of nearly 2 trillion euros, the European retail grocery market alone can make annual savings of approximately 80 billion euros by reducing self-service shrinkage to industry norms. AI is already helping to deliver an improved retail experience without consumers even realising. Retailers are making use of deep learning to analyse data from multiple channels, both digital and in-store, by sensors or video analysis. In this way, they are now able to deliver an enhanced and more personalised customer experience, as well as integrating bricks and mortar activities into the digital world. <clears throat> Working with Fujitsu, an international oil major, has applied AI to its retail outlets in France to identify possible sales for customers based on deductions from vehicle time. Yeah, so um, I cannot um, end this uh, session without acknowledging um, <clears throat> um, uh, so much of uh, knowledge available on YouTube, on LinkedIn, Google, then uh, Bernard Mar as well. Uh, through which I could acquire a lot of knowledge and collect this presentation for you all. Uh, so with this, um, we can uh, move to the closing uh, remarks. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful presentation. It was an eye-opening one. Uh, can we take some questions? Although you have covered few yeah. questions, but uh, yeah. Uh, sure. Like one question. Yeah, one question was there. What is the difference between strong AI and weak AI? Okay, so I would um, request Mr. Rahul Srivastava to uh, answer this. Okay, so. Yeah. Right, so uh, I'll I'll probably put it in my way. So there are um, supervised learning, there is unsupervised learning, and then there is reinforced learning. So strong AI is something which uh, uh, you know the, the unsupervised learning is more. Uh, every time that when it requires a um, lot of assistance is when the AI is weak. Right, sir. Uh, another fundamental question from a management student. Uh, what are the key areas that a management student should know about AI? Okay. So basically, <clears throat> the way um, we are operating businesses, uh, we have come to a stage where there requires a lot of planning, a lot of urgency uh, and clarity uh, to achieve uh, the business, business goals, business objective. And with so much of data around um, um, in, in every business, uh, for you to take, say, not data-driven decision, data-inspired decision, you cannot manually possibly do it without taking the support of the artificial intelligence systems. So that is where uh, it, makes, um, uh, it makes life that much more easier when you have a certain amount of insights uh, uh, in, insights that the uh, systems can throw based on which you can uh, decide the way forward. Right. So to, uh, just to put it in another way, it is um, uh, to make educated guesses 
for uh, your products journey forward right another question asks says uh, which programming language is not generally used in ai okay so, now this is a tech technical technical uh, point if any of the faculty can answer uh, am i audible yes rahul sir you are yes. audible okay uh, uh, generally we can code uh, machine learning and ai algorithms in any language but uh, 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 a language which is having a, a, a which supports a lot of functions which which, which supports libraries and which provides us uh, uh, libraries of functions will be very beneficial for us to code for for a student which is not uh, having knowledge of uh, of programming uh, so uh, therefore the students uh, prefer python for the for the coding of ai so python is is uh, is the most preferable language for the ai uh, but you can code uh, you can choose any any uh, uh, language which is have, having some oops concepts for the pro, uh, for the ai programming right yes and python is a, a open source um, uh, software um, usually it is downloaded using anaconda um, and um, uh, very easy to use uh, it's almost uh, as easy as excel if you really uh, understand python right another question says uh, what kind of unexpected failures might occur in a world built upon ai this is actually a very good question because while uh, ai has a lot of advantages and benefits uh, it can uh, also go wrong in many ways for example there could be bias in decisions um, um, for for example uh, uh, the system or the algorithm might suggest a higher a credit limit for a male person over a female person now this is a gender bias all right so ai can go wrong there uh, also um, it could go wrong uh, um, in uh, um, human race uh, as well as in um, it can give certain preferences to a different color skin person than over the other uh, skin color person so a lot of things can go wrong so therefore there is a separate subject called um, ethics in ai so there are a lot of organizations who have a separate section uh, to ensure that the ethics of uh, using artificial applications are maintained uh, for their overall you know um, uh, overall good of uh, uh, ai right sir uh, i have a question maybe it's a representation from few of the students like ai has proven to be very effective uh, in industries like retail and a uh, lot of uh, finance and banking industry people are also banking on ai especially on the fraud prevention part now uh, like uh, my question is whether uh, ai can be uh, in in coming future whether ai can be used for uh, more strategic decisions as compared to the more operational decisions as it is taking now yeah so um, ai uh, for operational it's already very well deployed for example um, like i said in the beginning for example say i have a certain credit card and i have used it at a certain locations or in the past 5 years 8 years and suddenly today i swipe uh, say 2 lakh rupees to i myself am swiping say 2 lakh rupees but historically i have never done that kind of a transaction within few seconds i will get a auto generated call just to verify whether it is me uh, because if it is something wrong then they can immediately address and alert various other uh, allied systems so that is operationally it is very very well deployed in fact uh, for strategic uh, also Uh, the, the the management teams uh, the 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 core committees of the bank uh, of the banks are already using because ai is throwing lot of uh, dashboards for them and insights for them based on which they are tweaking their decisions so it's already in place according to me especially in a very sensitive industry like banking 
so are you hinting at predictive analytics yes Pre uh, predictive as well as prescriptive descriptive right okay uh, do you have any other questions sir i want to ask can ai replace humans no that is exactly what i said right it has to be a collaborative uh, way uh, there is a lot of um, uh, noise that ai will eventually replace humans and all that is not what uh, it is intended to be and that is not what it will happen both uh, ha humans and ai have to collaborate so the humans have to assist ai in supervision in training uh, in sustaining ai and the machines will assist humans in amplifying our capabilities uh, in, uh, in in interacting more and uh, improving our own output so both will work together thank you sir so uh, i believe if there are no new questions uh, we can move to the conclusion part so ma'am can you please extend the vote of thanks sure sir Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, on the behalf, from the behalf, on the behalf of Sagar Institute of Science and Technology, Sister KBA, I would extend my vote of thanks to Anand, sir, uh, who have taken out time and give, given us knowledge about AI intelligence and machine learning, as well as I was also having a quite uh, gap into this learning. And beautifully, sir, has explained the topic and uh, explain our student i hope student have enriched themselves by his knowledge thank you so much sir yeah thank, thank you, you so much sir on behalf of sagar group of institutions especially the mba department and department of ai and ml and we really thank you for your consent to do this program at a uh, short notice and uh, i believe all of us have benefited from this and uh, in the future definitely we shall look forward to other aspects of your expertise uh, especially in the retail because you have been a person who has spent more than two decades in the retail industry and retail is a happening industry and a lot of uh, things students should know because uh, the dynamics is changing very fast so yes. In the future, we would look forward to hear from you about the changing dynamics in retail and how one should prepare to have a, a nice career in retail and what sort of preparations one should make. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. Yeah. No, I should be thanking 